You guys asked, so here we are. In my last video, I answered the question, should I build on Drupal 7 or Drupal 8? I mentioned in that video that we have a site currently in production on both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. To the end user, browsing the site is completely transparent. They have no idea they're hitting two different Drupal instances. Today, I'm gonna show you how we're pulling this off. So how are we doing this? The quick answer is we've got an Nginx server sitting in front of our two Drupal sites proxying traffic based on URL to either Drupal 7 or Drupal 8. In a nutshell, basically what is happening is the user makes a request to your website URL, which is pointed at our proxy server, the Nginx server, which has a list of rules of specific paths to push to Drupal 8 or otherwise push to Drupal 7. Let me show you a quick and dirty demo so you can see this in action. We're gonna get into the weeds, so put your DevOps hat on. I'm gonna do this all on my local host using Docker and a nice little utility called ngrok, which is used basically to tunnel back into my local system from the public internet. This is not how we're doing it in production, but the idea is the same. All right, so I'm gonna get two environments set up here. Uh, I'm gonna use Drush Quick Drupal to get my Drupal 8 environment set up. And so basically this will get me a running version of Drupal 8.1.7 on my local machine. While that's doing that over here, I'm gonna get our activelamp.com site set up locally as well. And this is a Jekyll site. And so uh, basically all we have to do is type in grunt serve to see that site locally. All right, so there's our Active Lamp website running on our local host port 8080. And our Drupal 8 site is coming up. And so now we have our Drupal 8 site hosted on, on port 888. And so what's nice about Drush Quick Drupal, if you're not familiar with it, is it actually builds you a Drupal 8 site, downloads all the dependencies, and then launches this browser, as you can see here on uh, port 8888. It's using the internal PHP server to actually serve this. And so we're gonna go ahead and log in. Don't need to set a password because we're not really going to be using this site. But uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set up a piece of content here. Um, and I'm going to call this the What We Do page. And I'm going to give it a URL path of What We Do. And so now if I save and publish this, we'll see the what we do page on our Drupal 8 installation. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that when you click on what we do on our Drupal 7 site, it'll actually route to the Drupal 8 site with an Nginx proxy that we talked about. And if you haven't used Docker, there's a utility called Docker Machine that basically will spit up a, a machine for you to run Docker on since you can't run it natively on a Mac yet. And so you can just type in Docker Machine Create. We're going to do this in VirtualBox. And this is going to be our default machine. OK, so our VirtualBox Docker Machine is set up. And so now it asks us to run this command, Docker Machine Environment Default. And so we're going to go ahead and run that command. And that basically exported some environment variables. And then it says to run this eval code right here. And so we're going to run that in our prompt as well. And so now we should be able to use the Docker command and see uh, what is on that Docker machine. And so we have no containers currently running on that Docker machine. OK, so we're going to create our Nginx proxy now. And let me just go to where I have it uh, pre-configured. All right, so let's look at what this uh, pre-configured proxy looks like. And so in this directory, I have a Docker file. 
And that Docker file basically reads from the Nginx image that's on Docker Hub. And then we have one step in there, which is basically copying this activelamp.conf file into the conf.d directory for Nginx so that it gets read when Nginx is started. And so let's look at the activelamp.conf file. And so basically I have some paths set up here. And so basically what we're saying is when you hit the, the root path, we're gonna go to some URL. When we hit the what we do path, we're gonna go to some URL, basically pass to, the, uh, to this URL. And then I have a couple Drupal paths, the core and the sites path. Basically anything that hits core or sites or anything underneath that will go to some URL. And so the way we're gonna actually do this is we're going to set up this, this Docker file to, or this configuration file to point at these local installations that I have set up. And so this is where ngrok comes into play. And so you can basically Google ngrok and install that. Go here, download ngrok, and then you'll be able to have tunnels coming back to your local host. But I'm gonna show you guys how uh, to actually use this once you have this installed. And so I'm gonna go back to my home directory and type in ngrok HTTP and I want, this is running on port 8080, and I want to map port 8080 back to my machine. And so this is basically updating or creating a tunnel out on the internet so that if I hit this URL right here, it'll hit port 8080 on my local host. And so then the Drupal 8 site that we want is on port 8888. And so let's open up another tab and grok 8888. Okay, so now I have two URLs exposed to the internet that are coming back to my local machine. Okay, so this is my Drupal 7 URL. In this case, it's actually going to be um, the Jekyll URL because we would be migrating from Jekyll up to Drupal 8. We'll come back into here and we're going to say, okay, anything or everything is going to come to this URL. But the what we do page, we want to actually put on Drupal 8. And so let's come over here to our Drupal 8 URL, which is the other tunnel that we opened up and grab that. And then we also need to redirect the core and the sites directory to Drupal 8. Uh, those paths don't exist in the Jekyll site, so we're safe by just directing all traffic underneath these paths to the Drupal 8 site. So let's go ahead and save this. All right. So now let's go ahead and start up our proxy. If we come back here to our D8 proxy, we have a command to actually build this image, and that is Docker build. We're gonna call this uh, the D8 proxy under my namespace. And the Docker file is in this directory. And so now this is going through the build process, pulling down the Nginx image, and then it's going to add in our one little command and create an image for us that we can then use and run with Docker. All right, so now our Docker image is created. We're gonna actually run this. And the way you do that is docker run. We're going to expose uh, a port to our machine. And that's going to be 8787. And we're going to map that to port 80 within the Docker container, which is what Nginx is listening on. And the image that we want to run is the image we just built, which is called Tom Friedhoff slash D8 proxy. All right. So now our image is running. Let's, uh, let's see if this actually works. If we hit, oh, one thing is this is running in a Docker machine. We need to know what the Docker machine IP address is. I'm gonna open up another tab here and I'm gonna type in Docker machine IP. All right, and so the default Docker machine is running on this IP address. So if I hit that IP address,
on port 8787, which is what we exposed, we can see that it is actually hitting our local installation, although the styles aren't there. And then if I hit the what we do, you can see that what we do is hitting the Drupal 8 path that we specified in our proxy. So that, that's the proxy in action. And so the reason why we had to use ngrok here is we couldn't access these containers directly from within our Docker container. And so this is actually going out through the ngrok service and coming back into our local machine. Typically what you would do is the IP address of the proxy is what you would set up in DNS. And so we're gonna mimic that right now by basically creating a host record for this IP address. And so let's go back to our terminal, open up a new window, get into our hosts file, and we're going to say this IP address is activelamp.com. Let's save that. And so now if I hit activelamp.com, let's just go to the root path. We'll see that we're hitting our web server internally that's running on this tab uh, right here. And then if we were to click on what we do, our Nginx proxy should forward us to Drupal 8. And there you can see that uh, the what we do path that we clicked on in the menu does in fact go to the Drupal 8 site. Let's go back to the uh, home page. And so basically as you build out your site on Drupal 8, you can update these paths and just point different paths pointing to Drupal 8 so that you can update incrementally. That's how you do it. An Nginx proxy server sitting in front of two installations directing traffic. In production, we actually host the proxy in AWS managed by Ansible. I hope you found this information helpful. Talk to you next time.